Hey Mark, it has been just a pleasure to have you here. I really enjoyed the last two years working with you on this journey, shaping what SaaS means for telcos. So, you know, my first question is, what do you think time is now to go SaaS? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. And likewise, I've enjoyed working with you and with the AWS team. Um, it's, a, it's a really compelling question, you know, why now? Uh, I think that we've been on a journey as an industry for some time. Started with cloud, so I thank you for breaking the ground in the industry and helping um, us to realize the operational improvements that we could have by, uh, uh, by introducing cloud and, and taking advantage of the technology. Um, but what we then learned is that cloud alone is not enough to get all of the operational improvements. We had to move to cloud native software. And so there was a, a big demand in the industry to, to move as quickly as we could to adopt cloud native software, even to produce network functions that were individually separable and, and uh, cloud native in nature. Um, but what that did was it, cr it increased the complexity. It didn't necessarily make things simpler. And so as a result, uh, a lot of the, uh, our industry, the network operators, were asking the vendors that were building the software to provide as a service models. And so it's led us really to this path today where we need to take those as a service models and make them more efficient. And I think the best way to do that is through software as a service, where you bring in a lot more automation more economies of scale, and of course that means more use of, of the cloud and technologies like AWS is providing. No, that's, that's great. Uh, what I would add on top of that is uh, the strong need that I see in the service provider is on one side for sure to become more efficient and uh, simplify the way they deploy, they, they operate, the way they manage the life cycle of the network. But on the other side, they have a huge challenge in terms of uh, opening the network, making the network consumable by the developers, because that will be the engine for innovation for them, right? So we as AWS are super happy to work with uh, companies like you that on one side can help them address the simplification of the network, awesome. making automation pervasive, yeah? Reusing the OPEX that they need to generate revenues, but on the other side, leveraging the cloud to enable a new stream of revenues just beyond connectivity, enable the developers to be the new users of the network capabilities. So this is the thing that I really love working with companies like you that have embraced completely this vision. Yes, yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so in this journey, um, which do you see are the biggest hurdles for them to overcome and get there? Yeah. You mentioned one, uh, contemporary solutions. Um, we are rooted in uh, a lot of legacy in our industry, and so we do need to bring contemporary solutions that do open up the, the box, if you will, and enable uh, ecosystems to thrive. But some of the others that are top of mind are financially oriented. I get a lot of questions about software as a service because it's an OPEX model generally. How do you capitalize it? There are some options for that, but typically what we're looking at is an OPEX model, not too different from the, the type of model that you, you offer. So financial uh, considerations come into play. Now, we've, there are a lot of studies out there that show that cloud adoption and SaaS adoption actually improve the economics, um, but it's going to take some time, I think, for those ideas to pervade. Uh, another is control, so operational control, especially in software as a service where we're asking the customer to turn over the controls to the vendor, to Nokia in this case, and then obviously we're working in partnership to, to provide the full, uh, full extent of the service. That's challenging for, for some operators. Um, but what I try to explain is, look, we're, we're really changing the point of control from the, the deep technical operational level. We're trying to up-level it to the business level and give, you still control, but you have the controls at a point where you can control what the business is doing, really focus where you need to be focused. And then finally, security is a big one, right? And, and we, you and I have talked about that in the past. 
Uh, but security is a big one. Uh, it's a question um, that the every company grapples with, but especially operators who have tight security controls. And so whenever we ask them to run something in the cloud, run it as a service, security comes up every time. So, so maybe a question for you, Fabio. Um, how do you think about security? What does AWS do to secure the cloud? So we have been uh, uh, talking about that at length with you as well. You know, security for us is uh, job zero. Without security, the cloud would not exist. Essentially, today, hundreds of thousands of customers from the most demanding sectors, government, military, global banking, healthcare, run their workloads on AWS cloud for a simple reason. That is, is the most secure cloud infrastructure today in the planet. And they push us. They push us every day. And so this is the kind of push that took us, take uh, today around 300 security functionality and 98 security and certification compliance to standards. This is the things that happen over time. You know, uh, what we hear from our customers is essentially the concern about data protection. They want to know where their data are instantaneously at every moment. They want to have the freedom to decide where those data reside. And they want to make sure that no one else other than them can access those data. And so we as AWS, we have provided uh, fundamental technological and contractual tools to address all those concerns. So over the years, we have uh, taken some fundamental architectural decisions like our regions are totally isolated one from each other in a way that each single event will not affect the others. We have essentially reinvented the hypervisors with Nitro. And we have built a physical separation between our administrators and the hardware and software where the customer applications and data reside. We have a right to a point where essentially we give our customers through tools like Control Tower, the ability to control instantaneously where their data reside and define their own guardrails. On top of it, we have provided the freedom to encrypt everything with all the most advanced technologies. And on top of it, we have been uh, hearing from them, hey, we like encryption, but we want to own the keys. Yeah. And so we said, that's absolutely the right thing to do. And so we provided the key management system, and on top of it, an external module, which is the hardware security module, in a way that they generate, they own, they manage the key. No one else other than them can encrypt and decrypt their data. So this is the fundamental point that you come and you decide how to implement. And again, the path is long and you need to be challenged. And you need to go through very complex milestones across the scale of this business. And this is why we are used to say that AWS that there is no compression algorithm to experience. And it's one of the reasons why AWS Cloud today can offer the level of security that you can use to offer your software as a service safety. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exciting to hear. Yeah. yeah it's really exciting. And you know, it's a, it's a, a joint journey, yeah. yeah? How to make sure that security will be really the key, the key tenet. And so the point is, in your view, which is the additional layer of security that you had on top on the SaaS? Yeah, uh, thank you for asking that. I, um, I look, I, very impressive, um, the, the security measures that AWS takes to secure the underlying infrastructure and the platform as a service. Obviously, I'm highly dependent on that. And um, in case people don't have a perspective when it comes to offering software as a service, as Nokia offers software as a service, we are also offering a single throat to choke. They look at me and they expect security to be built into every layer. They may not even necessarily know who the, the hyperscale platform is behind it. So I'm really dependent on you as a partner to, to help to solidify our offering. Um, we like you think about security in multiple layers, right? So we, first of all, our applications are designed for security. They go through 
rigorous security checks. We do the standard um, dynamic and static analysis on our applications to make sure that they come out of the factory as secure applications. But then on top of that, we layer on additional controls. We have operational controls. We have event management, incident management, protocols that are in place, well-defined and established. We have next generation uh, network um, firewalls that, that add additional security. And then finally, Fabia, I think from our customer's perspective, it may not be enough for them to hear that, yes, we've done all these things and we consider ourselves secure. So we layer on the, on the very top um, the, the certifications and the accreditations from third parties like GSMA, the, the security accreditation scheme, uh, as well as other uh, uh, protocols like uh, ISO 27001 or SOC 2. So from our perspective, we're taking every precaution we can to make sure that, as you described it, job zero gets done, that our SaaS application is secure. But it is fantastic to hear you explain what you're doing in the cloud itself to make sure that the cloud is secure so that we can give our customers together, we can give them the confidence they need to be able to adopt this new paradigm. Yeah. Mark, thank you for the partnership. I think this is a journey and uh, we are committed as AWS to really enable you to make this happen. Um, I went through your white paper a couple of days ago. I found it uh, a piece of thought leadership and I really invite everyone to go and uh, have a read. So insightful. Well, thank you for your contributions to that white paper. Uh, it was yeah. great. It was great and great partnership and uh, trust in place. Thank you for that. Thank you for the thank time. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay.